All right, so welcome back to Lightroom here. And uh, today we're going to be going over the develop module. So the develop module, um, you just are going to select here. So we have three images selected to work on today. And so I'm just going to hit develop. Let me knock that down. So the first thing that we have over here, uh, and once again, you can click on these little buttons to hide and show these panels. All right. So Navigator, same thing before. It just shows you your image. <clears throat> Presets we'll go into more later, but they're just kind of like pre-set up uh, adjustments for a photo. So if you were in black and white and you want to do blue um, with a blue filter, that's what it would look like. Blue high contrast. If you ever see this weird blue color, it's not actually in your photo. It's like uh, it's an alert to say that your shadows are too dense in that area. I'm going to click on another one here and I'll show you what it looks like when your highlights blown out. So green, infrared, and then we'll go down here to uh, let me blow this out a little bit. Yeah, so that's saying you blew out your highlight. You've lost detail. Now you don't want to do that. So you want to bring that back until that red disappears in the face otherwise you'll have a really weird spot when you print it out so those are uh some basic just uh hit reset to get that back where it is presets and in lightroom has a whole bunch of them built in so you know and, and i'll get more into presets later presets are, are just adjustments anything that you do in a preset you can actually do over here it's just already done every photo is toned differently so just because you click on a preset doesn't mean that's usually it's finished you might have you're probably gonna have to go in and adjust it because the highlight and shadow densities and stuff will just need to be fiddled around with it might not look perfect um, personally I don't use presets so we'll click that off snapshots um, we don't have any created we'll go in as you're toning you can create a snapshot um, and uh, so you can do like one in the beginning one in the middle one in the end and if you want to see the difference or you want to go back in time, the snapshot will show you the difference as to what you did when you toned it or let you go back in time. You also have a history panel. No history panel is just like uh, um, uh, what it says. It lets you go back in history as to what you did. So these are all the things. So when I imported it here and then I started making adjustments and then I went back to reset it. So history, you can go. Um, it only saves a certain number of settings. If you ever want to go in, you need to go into preferences here and it will allow you to change how many states of history um, you have available. Obviously, the more history states, um, the more RAM and memory the computer is going to take up to remember what it did. And collections are just like we talked about before. Um, they are places to store images. Um, and we'll get more into that later. We're not going to spend time on that today. So we have the different ways to look at our images here. Um, we're just going to stay with this kind of big viewer here um, today. So over here we have that histogram. And this histogram shows where your data is. So we can see kind of a, there's a lot in the mid to highlight areas. This is your highlight. This is your shadow over here. All right, so um, right here we have uh, different um, items that allow you to do different things with the photo. So obviously this is your crop button. Right here we have um, spot removal or the clone brush. This is red eye removal. This is a gradient or a graduated filter. And this is a radiator filter. And this is your adjustment brush to do selective toning. All right. So the first thing you're going to get into here is your basic panel. All right. And so uh, the first thing you're going to do, especially if you're shooting with RAW. Now, this is just a, a regular JPEG image. Um, it is going to allow you to color balance your image. All right. So right now it only gives us as shot auto and custom all right if we go back uh 
to um, let's see a folder like outlaws so these are JPEG images or not JPEG images these are um, raw files so under the raw files you'll see you have all the different adjustments that are regularly available on your camera now since uh, we're not using this um, a, a JPEG those are not available right now but that that's the reason why all right so here's our three original images we'll go to the develop module and the first thing I'm going to do I can do is an auto color correct all right so it's just automatically trying to color correct so this is as shot so notice this is kind of a cyan or a cool background and the computer thinks that it needs to warm it up now I think that's probably too much so we'll go back to as shot so you can come in here and manually do some adjustments so if you you'll see here it's got kind of blue and yellow or cyan and yellow green and magenta so obviously if you go this way it's going to add blue add this way it's going to add warm it up this way it's going to add some green this way it's going to add some magenta all right if you double click this little tint it goes back to zero if you double click temp it goes back to zero it's really hard to make these little adjustments um, go where you want so in this image we'll try oh plus two say that looks good um, to get rid of co color cast or cyan cast you, you don't really want to do it here there's a, a different place that works better so that's basically how you do color adjustments or color temperature adjustments um, within Lightroom so we'll scroll down a little here the next is tone so you have an auto tone I will tell you this right off it tries to set white tries to set black auto in whether in Photoshop or Lightroom does usually not work so good however it didn't work too bad in this one but it also will color correct and do some things you can see it made some pretty wild adjustments here you usually in a photo don't want to make that wild of an adjustment so I'm gonna hit command Z and go back in my history state one so that was command Z that lets you go back one step basically I uh, undid what I did so this one I think the exposure is probably pretty good now these are what's called global all right so they affect everything in your whole image we'll be going over to this adjustment brush where we can do a selective area but these are global adjustments so they affect everything in your whole image so uh, we have exposure which we don't really need so once again we'll double click exposure it will go back so a contrast actually looks pretty good so uh, highlights uh, looks pretty good actually overall this is not too bad it's interesting it's a little bit warm when I add that red here and then if I don't it's a little bit too cool I'm not sure exactly where I like this image at maybe at plus one so you can actually come in here and just hit one and then I'll hit return and that'll give me plus one I think that's a better adjustment so then we have our shadows where we can open up our shadows or darken our shadows whites I've never ever used whites um, blacks I will occasionally add some uh, black DMAX to an image but it's like the very very last thing that I do clarity clarity is interesting um, students tend to love the clarity um, it sharpens and adds what's called dynamic contrast or adds contrast to the image so it's kind of a dual purpose thing it's doing two different things at once I'm not a huge fan of doing it and if you do use clarity it's like just like the blacks it's like the last thing I do vibrance where we're just kind of intensifying that color and it is very uh, similar to saturation um, I don't usually use these too much as a global function usually I'll do them more isolated with the adjustment brush all right so I'm going to close these just so we can see these windows um, you do have a curve so you can make an adjustment like in Photoshop with a curve um, I think most people tend to just use the sliders because it's easier to do but if you do understand how the curves work 
um, you do have the availability to use tone curve. All right, so this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, actually, I use it all the time for color correction. Um, I found that hue saturation, which is this, is uh, is much, much better than color balance. So, uh, or any sort of color balance adjustment, um, whether in Photoshop or Lightroom. So, uh, what this allows you to do, so right now, if I click on hue, we're in hue of this, not saturation, not luminance, not all, though you can do that. We're just affecting the hue or the color. So in red, if I go this way, it's making my red yellow, or if I go this way, it's making my red redder. All right, so in this case, like let's say my, I think my red's a little bit too red, I can go this way and sort of warm it up. I don't think we need that. All right, let's go to uh, blue. So you can see that color cast, I'm switch, changing that color cast by shifting that color one way or another. So saturation is the how much. Now this is where you're going to get rid of this color cast in the background if you want, or you see this kind of cyan color. This is normal in a photo to get this. So if I wanted to remove that, I would just go into, you'll see, if you go, usually if you go all the way to the right, if it gets really bright in that color, that's usually where your color is. There's only a little bit. Now, if we go to the blue, see how we pick up all that blue? So if we dial it all out, now we re removed all the blue. Since she doesn't have blue eye color or anything, we've kind of neutralized that color cast. And we don't want to totally get rid of it because it will look weird, but we can get rid of most of it. All right, so I'll come up here and we'll do red. Just so you can see, look at our lips. So we're controlling that specific color. So I'll use this to adjust or shift colors every once in a while as well. So let's try orange. So you can see orange is really in her hair. And that's where I was kind of seeing that problem before. But I think if I go back to hue and I go to orange, I can make it I can get rid of some of that red. Now you don't want to do a lot. We'll just try like plus four and then we'll go to saturation in orange and we will we can neutralize that, kind of dumb that down a little bit. Um, and the last thing we have here is luminance. So luminance makes that color brighter or darker. So right here where we have orange, I know in the hair, if I go this way, it makes the, everything that has orange in it brighter and this way darker. All right, you'll actually use this. You'd be surprised, especially in yellow. Um, when I'm getting rid of a yellow cast, it, it can get a little muddy in the face, and I'll just kind of bump yellow up to give it a little pop. You can see it happening up there. Um, this image has been sharpened, is a little grainy, so it's doing some funky things there. But uh, and then all it's uh, so anything that you do, it's effect affecting the whole spectrum of saturation hue and luminance it's not something that i ever really used that one so i'll hit reset and you'll see the difference so i'll command z that and then we'll go back so you can see uh redo settings undo settings redo settings you know just that little bit made made a big uh difference in the image and, and all this is dependent on how you exactly want to tone it. Just because I do something doesn't mean that I'm correct. Uh, I will go back here. Um, so that's under HSL. We'll go to color. So in color, we also have the availability. It's just a, a different way to basically do the same thing. So it's just isolating the specific color versus all of them on one. So either way you want to work. And then there's also a black and white mode, which there's one under basic, and I'll come back up to that later. Um, let me command Z that. So split toning. So split toning adds a color to your hot. It gets, almost makes it like black and white, and then it will have like one color in your highlights and one color in your shadows. Um, when We'll go into this later. So detail. This is where you're going to add your sharpening. To an image and sharpening should be the last thing that you do the very very last thing lens correction um 
don't worry about lens correction right now. Uh, that fix some issues with wide angle and, sh and shooting. We'll get into it. So we have transform. Um, once again, this is sort of, of a more advanced technique and we're not going to get into it. So we have effects. Effects are a vignette, so I'll make a vignette. It looks like that. That's a bad vignette, but we'll show you what it's doing. And you can control like how big or small that vignette is. Um, if you want to actually add grain to your image, you can add grain. And there's a newer thing called dehaze. So we're not going to really dehaze this image. And we'll get into specifics of all this stuff. And then camera calibration. We're not going to even fiddle with this right now. But, it, you know, it, it, basically working in color. So what we want to start off with here, basic, is just your basic panel. Getting used to adjusting stuff. And if remember, if you want to set to default, to remember, double click that. So before I asked about black and white. So if we want to switch this image to a black and white, it, what's great about this is um, it will allow you to uh, come down here in black and white and adjust each individual color of the image. So anything that's red, you can make brighter or darker. Anything that's orange, you can make brighter or darker and through all the colors. And so you really can control the way your black and white image looks by being able to control the brightness of each of these individual colors. And once again, it has like an auto method or mode to it. So you know, a perfectly toned color image does not translate into a perfectly toned black and white image. Usually black and white, you kind of have to bump it up or brighten certain areas uh, a little bit more than you would with color, or they'll become kind of flat and muddy. Um, so previous here is allowing you to uh, do a, a previous tone, or if you want to reset it and go back to the beginning, um, you can hit that right there. So filters on and off, and this is just uh, another selection thing that just like we used before in the library, and then we have these tones down in here. So that is the basics of the uh, develop module. Um, next uh, video, I will come in and I will really go into how to use the crop tool. Um, I will show you the clone tool. Um, if you shoot correctly, you should never have to use red eye. Um, and then we'll do the adjustment brush. We're going to leave these two out for right now because the main things you're going to use in toning are the crop, the basic, and selective toning. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you next time. And thanks for watching.